Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Yo, very serious question. Why the hell are there absolutely zero tutorials on how to script simple impact frames in Roblox Studio? They gatekeeping the hell out of that. But don't worry, bro, because you know I got you. If you want to learn how to make impact frames, Coco just give me a bars. little bit of your time and stay till the end because trust me when I say that coding impact frames is so easy that it's not even funny. Also, I live right next to a construction site and these dudes decided to get active real early in the morning. So, uh, yeah, sorry for any background noise you might hear. All right, let's get it. Yeah. You might be wondering what we're going to be using to make the impact frames because obviously we're not going to draw them because we're not artists. But instead, what we're going to do is that we're going to mix color correction effect with highlights to create an impact frame like effect for me to teach you how to make this i made this little place over here the first thing you're going to do if you want to create impact frames is create the backgrounds for your impact frames and that's what we will be using color correction effect instances for to do this go to the lighting service and you're going to add two new color correction effect instances and you're going to name one of them white bg impact frame and the other going to name black bg impact frame bg stands for background by the way i already have mines created here but i'm going to show you what you're going to do next once you have your two instances created you're going to want to make sure that the tint color property of the white one is white obviously and the tint color property of the black one is black and also you want to make sure that the brightness is set to one for both of these otherwise players won't see them mine's are disabled but if i click enable real quick you can see that it turns my screen black or white depending on which one i have enabled after you're done with that you're going to disable both of them by unmarking the enabled property of both instances that way players won't spawn with a white or black screen covering their whole game now on to step two all you gotta do for step two is just create a remote of any replicated storage and name it impact frames all right step two completed now on to step three the final step and the longest step go to start player scripts and you're going to insert a new local script and call it impact frames manager inside this script we will have the actual impact frames coded all right so the first thing you'll want to do once you're in that local script is get everything that you will need into variables obviously so get the replicated storage into a variable get the impact frames event and the lighting service so you can actually get the white impact frame background and also so you can get the black impact frame background and then last but not least you'll want to set how much time will the impact frames last in this case i set mine to 0 0.25 now we're going to connect a function to whenever the impact frame event is triggered so you do impact frames event dot on client event colon connect function normal objects of course press enter when you're done with that so it actually closes the function now you're going to be wondering what's normal objects it's just an argument that we're going to be using to pretty much just pass on what objects we want to be in the impact frame essentially it's gonna be a table of different instances and what we will do now is loop through that table and give them highlights to recolor them accordingly you'll see what i mean in a second so inside the function the first thing you'll do is create a table that will store all the highlights we create so if you don't know what highlights are essentially there's something that colors your character or anything that it's parented to with the purpose of highlighting it or making it more visible you can also make it visible through walls through stuff like this all right so you create a table called table of highlights and now we will create three functions want to destroy the highlights that are inside the table want to color every single normal object white and want to color every single normal object black and of course we're going to color them using highlights that's what we're going to need highlights for so for the first function i called it destroy all highlights i used a for loop to loop through the table of highlights and then destroy whatever finds on every single iteration as simple as that essentially it clears the table kinda by destroying the elements inside it then we have the give black highlight function as you can see it has an argument called obj and this is what we're going to use to reference the object we want recolored with the highlight you can create a highlight using instance.new i called it black highlight you can color whatever you want make sure the fill color is black through using color.new make sure the fill transparency is zero so it's colored fully without being like transparent and stuff highlights have an outline so you go ahead and remove that by doing outline.transparency equals to one set the parent of the highlight to the obj 
and it will automatically apply the recoloring. And last but not least, add the highlight we just created to the highlight table. Did pretty much the same thing for the give white highlight function. Just make sure to change the color property to white. All right, so now we have a function that can destroy every highlight we've created. One that recolors the object to black, one that recolors the object to white. Now we can actually start messing around with the backgrounds that we created. So create a function called part one. That's gonna be the first impact frame. This is gonna have like a white background and every object is gonna be black. So it contrasts the white background. So enable your white background for the impact frame through doing white BG impact frame dot enabled equals true. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through every single object in the normal objects table and use the give black highlight function and pass every single element when iterated to that function so that every object turns black just like we wanted right and then since the impact frame sequence is going to have three parts as you can see i made it weight the total impact frame duration divided by three next for our impact frame sequence is the black background with white colored objects and we'll do that on a function called part two so first thing we want to do here is to destroy all the highlights we previously used by using our destroy all highlights function and then we'll loop through every single object again in the normal objects table and just recolor the objects to white just like we did before for the black recoloring immediately after that's done disable the white background impact frame and enable the black one and just so you know what will happen with this when this runs it will pretty much just invert the colors of the screen make you wait one third of the total duration again and destroy all the highlights again all right that's part two now for part three and the last part of the impact frame sequence loop through the normal objects table again and use the give black highlight function so they all get recolored to black remember to pass the object as an argument for the function immediately after that disable the black background, enable the white one, make it wait one third of the duration once again, and then disable both of the backgrounds since it's the last part, right? And then after you've done that, destroy all the highlights again so players don't keep the color after the effect has ended since again, part three is gonna be the last part. And technically we are done, but we gotta call the functions part one, part two, and part three so that it actually runs the code that they have inside them. So go ahead and do that, and now we're done. Essentially, what we've done here is make an event that can be triggered by any server script in the server so that a specific client can see the impact frames. I'll use this part here as a trigger. It has a script inside that detects any character that touches the part, and it also checks if it has a player instance in charge of that character. And this is just to see if it's a client of the game. And if it is, then it fires the impact frames event to that specific client. Make sure to pass on the objects you want to be visible in the impact frame. For this case, it's just the player's character. So I just put the player's character inside of a table and then just pass that table as the second argument for the fire event of the bindable event called impact frames. So essentially, table of objects here will be the normal objects on the local script. So it's gonna recolor my character when I touch the part and the impact frame effect is triggered. Go ahead and test this and there you go simple impact frames obviously if you're more experienced in coding you can get creative with this to achieve more stuff but i just wanted to give you an idea on how to create a basic impact frame system if you want to look at the code yourself the place i use for this video is downloadable so you just gotta go to the description and find the link to download it if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments or you can also join the discord server i'm very active in there as well look in the description to the discord server as well let me know if you like this video and also what else you want to see me cover of course and this said wait let me catch my breath real quick <sighs> all right we're good keep leveling up bro be safe and i'll see you when i see you peace